G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name is Matthew. Now there are many times when we've all experienced poor cut quality on our CO2 laser machines. Now it may be all running really well one day and the next day we come in and for some reason we just can't seem to get that good quality cut. And if you're not getting good quality cuts on your laser machine then this quick troubleshooting guide might help you get your machine performing well again. So first we're going to have a look at cleaning the lens at the end of our laser tube. Now this lens where the laser beam exits the laser tube through to mirror one, that can get, get contaminated with smoke, dust or fumes, which can effectively reduce the cutting power of our laser. So what I use are these lint-free swabs, and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can purchase these, and they don't leave any scratches or dust on the laser lens. So using that and some isopropyl alcohol, you can spray the swab carefully, and then insert it carefully into the laser lens here, and swirl it around to clean all the dust and the uh, smoke off that lens. Now the isopropyl alcohol will uh, evaporate so that no moisture is left on that lens. And we can see here that we're getting some of that dirt out from that lens. Another thing that you can use are some glass cleaning swabs that have been pre-moistened with the isopropyl alcohol. Just remember just to check to make sure that no lint or dust is left on the lens after you finish cleaning. Now while we're cleaning we also want to make sure that we clean any beam combiner unit. Now you can remove the laser beam combiner lens and clean it with a pre-moistened alcohol swab or you can just leave it in place and clean it with a lint-free uh, swab like this and the isopropyl alcohol. Now you just spray that on there and we want to clean this uh, beam combiner unit front and back. This is if you have a beam combiner unit installed. Now another thing that you want to do is to make sure that the mirrors are well aligned and cleaned. Now dirty mirrors will uh, not effectively uh, reflect that laser beam of light and this results in reduced power at the material being cut. Now you may have performed a mirror alignment in the past and had everything spot on and make sure that these adjustment knobs are secure. If this locking nut is loose then vibrations and movements from operating the machine rate may result in these uh, mirrors slowly going out of alignment and this dealignment of these mirrors may not be noticeable right away, but as you continue to uh, run your machine, it can drastically decrease the quality and ability to uh, cut effectively. So after you've performed your mirror alignment, make sure that these locking nuts are secure. And when aligning your mirrors, don't forget that you need to make sure that the final alignment of the lens through the laser nozzle is coming out centred. And it's a good idea to check this at various places uh, on your work area to make sure that when you pulse the laser, it's coming out the centre of that nozzle. If it deflects off the side of the nozzle, we're also losing power and therefore cannot cut effectively. The next thing we want to do is uh, check the nozzle for contamination. So we will uh, just remove this airline here take out the laser lens tube and remove the nozzle. So dirt and splatter from materials being cut can start to clog the nozzle and as a result the laser beam will need to burn away this material causing a reduction in power before the beam hits the material being cut reducing the efficient power out of the material. So give that a good clean and um, make sure that the nozzle is clear. So check the focusing lens is clean and that it's correctly inserted. Now if possible don't handle the lens, use a, uh, a holder or a lint-free cloth um, to uh, protect that lens. Now take note of that lens orientation as I just mentioned and give the lens a good clean and then insert it back into the tube. So you can use these uh, pre-moistened cloths to give the lens a clean and then insert using the cloth into the lens tube holder and then carefully securing with the locking screw. Also while you're doing that make sure that the lens does not rattle around if you have a loose lens that will also affect the quality of your cut. While you're cleaning your lenses and your mirrors make sure that you uh, have them in securely and that they don't rattle around as I mentioned that will give you poor cuts. Now if you put too much pressure on these mirrors while you're cleaning or you're too aggressive you can actually take off the silicon gold coating that's on those and um, the other thing is that this, even the small patch here, can reduce the efficiency of the power being uh, directed down to the work material and reduce the effectiveness of your cuts. While you're checking your lenses, make sure that they're not uh, blemished or burnt or that there's no cracks in them like this one here. So after you've cleaned your lens, you can then uh, make sure that you attach it back to the nozzle and insert it into the laser lens tube holder. Just remember to reattach the uh, airline 
and that's our next step we're going to be checking the uh, air assist so we want to check the air assist and to uh, reduce the fouling of the laser the laser has an air supply here to provide a positive pressure in the nozzle to prevent smoke and debris coming up and settling on the lens now smoke and debris can still get on the lens if we have smoke swirling around in here and our exhaust system is not sucking it away effectively the smoke can enter through the uh, hole at the top of mirror three and then settle down onto the lens so it's always a good idea to check your lenses are clean as we've just done but also that this positive pressure is there available at the bottom of the nozzle. Now if you're using a high pressure air compressor for cutting through timbers uh, one way that you can uh, fault find is to check to make sure you're using the same pressure to cut through that material as you previously tested and had good results with and if you're finding that it's not then you may want to check the air lines are clear Check the air lines for kinks and make sure that you empty your water trap. Now this one automatically uh, empties once the uh, pressure has been released, but there are other designs of water traps. It's a very good idea to make sure you don't have water in your air lines because this can cause condensation on your laser lens. Check your focus gap. Now this is more overlooked with machines that use an autofocus system where users take for granted that the calibration of the autofocus system remains accurate. So it's a good idea to check your focal gap with the step gauge to ensure the accuracy and obviously making sure that you're setting the focal gap correctly for the right focal length lens. Now I've done a video previously on lens selection and doing a ramp test and it's a good idea to check that one out if you're unsure. Check that the laser bed is level and make the adjustments where uh, it's required. And a simple way to uh, check this is to use an engineer square such as this where you um, are looking for the measurement from the laser bed to the bottom of the axis gantry here and measure that in various locations across the laser bed to make sure that it's level. You would like to check this at the front and at the back. Uh, if you have the laser bed that's not level then the laser can get out of focus in those uh, lower areas and therefore reduce the effectiveness of our cutting. And another thing to check when we're using the material is uh, we've got the bed level but make sure that the material is sitting flat on that uh, surface and not curved up. Sometimes we have timbers or acrylics that have a slight bend in them and we can get poor cuts if it's raised up higher. So we want to make sure that our material is sitting level on our cutting surface. The next thing that we want to do is check our cutting speed and power settings. Compare the laser cutting and the speed settings with those that you've previously known to achieve good cuts and quality with, and test these on the material to determine if you require additional power or slower speed to achieve that quality cut. And if you are find that you're required to increase the uh, laser power or reduce the speed, then it may indicate that you are needing to replace that laser tube in the future. If you have a milliamp meter installed, a good tip is to record uh, the milliamps from your laser tube and the power percentage for a known cut and then monitor this over time. For example, you have your machine running really well and you may have 50% cutting power which will equal to maybe 20 milliamps. And then in future tests you may notice that that 50% cutting power is reduced to only 17 milliamps. And this is a good indication of a slowly deteriorating tube or laser power supply. Now the lifespan of a standard glass CO2 laser tube is about 8,000 to 10,000 hours. That sounds like a long time, but if we're using a machine every day, seven days a week, for four hours a day, then that's about 2,500 days, or just under seven years. Now the gases in the laser tube can still permeate through the glass while it's not in use. So many manufacturers estimate that the estimated lifespan of a tube is about three years. So thanks for visiting MW Laser. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe and notification bell to be notified when I release new videos in the future. Now these videos I uh, provide out of my own time and a lot of the uh, finances to produce these videos come from affiliate links, which you'll find in the description below, as well as you can support me at the website buymeacoffee.com forward slash MW Laser. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care. Cheers.